Welcome. You are listening or watching Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and today uh, I'm joined by not Jeremy, although Mark, you do have the same haircut, pretty much. Smooth. Jeremy stunt double. Smooth. Jeremy stunt double. Mark Warner. How are you today, Mark? I'm doing awesome. Hopefully, you're doing just the same. Absolutely, and uh, also esteemed. Long time uh, guest of the show, uh, Mr. Craig Wareham. How are you? I'm esteemed. Wow, <laughs> wow that's excellent. Uh, and we, you'll notice if you're watching that we are here in person. We're at uh, the lovely Mark Warner's Professional Martial Arts Institute here in lovely Ipswich, Massachusetts. Thank you for letting us uh, record here Our today. pleasure. And we are here to discuss the ins and outs of cross-training, but... Before we get there, I want you to recognize at home that we have a website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, where you can find everything you might possibly want to know on each of our guests, whether it's an individual interview episode on Mondays or whether it's a topic show. There's going to be show notes. There's going to be transcripts. You can read through the episode if uh, you prefer to do that, or if you want to search for something, you can do that there. Um, you can also go to whistlekick.com to find a multitude of things that you can purchase, whether it's t-shirts or whether it's hats or sparring gear or training programs or books, all kinds of things you can find at whistlekick.com. You can use the code PODCAST15, save yourself 15% off just about anything there. You can also find all the information on the events that we throw, whether that's uh, Whistle Kicks Marshall Summit event in Keene in November, or any of our mul many free training days throughout the country, or all in weekend. You're going to find all that information at whistlekick.com. Uh, you can also, if you want to support us, you can join our Patreon at whistlekick.com, uh, P R T P A T R E O N slash whistlekick. Uh, and for as little as $2 a month, you can help support the show and make sure that it happens. So if you think about it, $2 is less than a cup of coffee. For less than a cup of coffee a month, you can help this show grow uh, and continue to happen, which we would appreciate. And then for that $2 a month, you get stuff. I mean, that's pretty cool. And you can obviously support at higher tiers than that. The cheapest and easiest way you can help support the show, however, is to just share it with a friend. Um, tell people about the show. If you hear an episode that's like, oh, that was a really good one, <clears throat> let someone else know. All right, so. We're here to talk about the ins and outs of cross-training, and I thought you two would be good people to talk to about this because you, Craig, if you were to say what, quote, style do you predominantly train or did you predominantly train in, you would say... Kempo. And you are here training at Mark's in not Kempo. Not yeah, Kempo. my other predominant styles. Not Kung Kempo. Fu and Kali and <laughs> not Kempo. Not Kempo. So <laughs> you guys train together fairly often. Yeah. Um, and we are here to talk about the ins and outs of cross training. So let's talk about the ins first. Right? The, the the good things, the good reasons. What made you decide to you were training Kempo and now you're not you're not not training Kempo, you're still doing Kempo, yeah. but you're doing other stuff too. Talk about what made you, what brought you to that decision. Um, I, the school that I started in always encouraged cross training. Mm -hmm. So we, did, Kempo was our base, but we also did kickboxing, we did Yoshitsune combat jujitsu, and, and some other things as well. So I never did specifically one style. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I wasn't raised that way in the arts. I yeah. was raised that if you have questions, go find answers, and you can learn something from every system and style. So um, I met Mark uh, eight, nine years ago, yeah, probably, yeah, give or so. take. And um, I had always wanted to try Kung Fu, and I had never found a Kung Fu teacher. And I met Mark at an event where he was teaching Kung Fu. And uh, I found out that he knew my instructor from a long time ago. And yeah. then we just connected that way. And, you know, it's been great because on top of, you know, I can go and teach a Kung Fu seminar and it would be a, a kung fu seminar or i could yep. teach a kempo seminar it would be you know mm -hmm. um but the mindset that i've always had is how can i just make what i do better like what can i pull into it mm. and i think that that's the benefit of cross training is not how do i throw this away and take this it's how do i take this and add it to the things i want mm. you know or is there a more efficient way to yeah. do something in a different style. Well, if there is, I'm probably going to take it and add it into what I'm doing. So not so much throwing away, but tweaking what you're learning 
to fit what you're looking to do. Right. Oh, I dig it. And Mark, any thoughts on that? Oh, <laughs> cross training is the ultimate way to get to where you want to go the quickest. Uh, we do a lot. We did, just came back from an event in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been doing martial arts since, since 1974, and I'm there working with the guys. One young, younger man, Jeff, he was 33, but he, I connected with a lot of stuff that he was teaching because I'm like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to borrow this, and some of the others as well. So that's just a quick one. Now, working with other people, it just, well, the way I see martial arts is it all blends together, all flows together. So there's, if you know what you're doing, you're not going to do it wrong. You may not do it exactly the way I do it, but you're not going to do it wrong. We were working this morning mm -hmm. on some uh, on some uh, stuff, and you did something. I'm like, mm, I'm going to borrow that one too. That's great. So it's all uh, the reason I started to do mostly cross training is because at the time before I started becoming involved with uh, people from Whistlekick, thanks to Mr. Craig here, I kept running into people who did not want me to achieve my goals. Mm. And the cross training is probably the best way to achieve those goals. I, actually, I'm working with uh, doing some work with Stephen Watson right now, another great man. So everybody, everybody, if you meet the right people and cross train with the proper people, you will achieve your goals much quicker. One thing that I really stress to my students is I want them to become better than me, but I keep learning too. So I have I've had a few who've almost achieved it, but they're working on it. But if I keep training, maybe I can keep ahead of them a little bit, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool, which is just lots of fun. I always have something new to bring back to them. So the, the common thread I'm noticing in both of those stories is the open-mindedness, right? That the, you, neither of you went in with a closed mind that this is the, the only. Um, and, and I am the same way. And, and I uh, am stealing this analogy from Jesse Enkamp. He's the first person I heard mention it, although he, maybe he stole it. I don't know. But, you know, getting to where you want to go in your martial journey is like climbing a mountain. And when you start your journey in judo or jujitsu or kempo or kung fu or karate, regardless, you're starting at the bottom. And the distance between judo and karate is, can be pretty, pretty far. Mm. Um, you know, maybe the distance from karate and taekwondo isn't as far, but they're still way on the other side of the, you know, around the mountain. And as you get closer up to that, the top of the mountain, even though they're going their own path, they are a lot closer as the higher they get. And so there is this, this connection between all of them. And, and I think that's that open-mindedness to understand that, yes, we're all on a separate path, but we're all going the same place. And if, as you mentioned, Mark, if there's something else that you can learn that'll help you get to where you're going, that, that's a, certainly a, a great thing. Um, we've said on Whistle Kick all the time that there's only so many ways that you can punch and kick and only so many of those ways make sense through the lens of combat. And so it makes sense that there's a lot of this synergy between all of these arts. Um, let's, something we did earlier today when we were training, because we, we got done a little training session right now, and, you know, a little, a little sweaty here, <laughs> um, is we were working on things that I had never n not done much of, mm -hmm. um, and certainly not from the, the style, not through the lens of, mm -hmm. of your teaching, and so I was doing them in a karate way. Why? Because I'm mostly a mm -hmm. karate practitioner. And, you know, can you speak to that a little bit about, you know, your, the, the experiences you've had learning one thing but having had your predominant training in another art? I think for me, one of the things as I'm out in the world more and stuff that, and I was talking to somebody about this the other day, I, I'm grateful that I was always given the lens of, hey, you know what? like learn something from everybody, like kind of mm -hmm. get that idea. So I, I consider myself to be fairly well-rounded. Like I'm not a, a jack of all trades, a master of none, right? Like mm -hmm. I can, I can kind of hang in and do stuff. I could feel a karate influence in the way that you were moving and mm -hmm. rolling um, as opposed to when Mark does it and it's got a little bit more of a circular Kung Fu sea lot kind of feel to it. Um, and and I, think, I think what's interesting is when you just, to me, it's all conversational, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I know a little bit, and truthfully, you've done you've you've taught me 
in seminars before. I know a little bit of karate. <laughs> sure, 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 of course. Uh, enough to be conversational. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, just like when I talk to my Taekwondo friends, I know just enough to be conversational. And I find that that bridges gaps and allows us to make a connection where something may click where I go, I'm struggling with a move and I go, oh wait, but it's very similar to this move. And exactly. then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. boom. And then it's easier for me to pick things up. Mm. When you have a conversation and you only know your language, and the other person only knows their language, you miss so mm. much nuance. Yeah. As okay. opposed to being able to, to be at least a little conversational in it. Yeah, that makes sense. Mark? I was happy as a pig and poop this morning. Because you came down and all trained, right. all right? You came down and you started training, and you're, you're at such, you're at the caliber where I could show you something. You had, you picked it up, adapted it. You had a little bit of your own nuance. Wasn't, wasn't exactly what I was showing, mm. but it wasn't wrong. Mm. So I, I was sitting there, I was happy as everything. And like I said, I picked up stuff from you as well. So that, that went really well. And it reminded me of, of uh, my first, I think, yeah, my first, uh, no, first time I, was, I taught at the free training day. Because I was, it was, before me was Ross Chen, mm -hmm. uh, Krav, Mag Krav Maga, mm -hmm. and then, New York, I, yep. yeah, then, it was, then it was myself, then it was uh, Bruno uh, Trindade, mm -hmm. who did Capoeira. And I'm watching, I'm watching Ross, I'm like, this guy's fantastic. Great. He was showing the proper moves, proper distance, proper. So I got my turn. I'm like, all right, if you guys were in Rogers, this is going to be easy. Mm. And I just played off of him. And of course, I added the forward that we use, which is very similar to Capoeira. Mm -hmm. So when Bruno took the stage, he said, all right, you guys did pretty much the footwork from Mark's class. Mm. So that was wicked cool. That was awesome. Now, in that type of setting, those type of minds, People progress. Doom, 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 doom. I think some of those people are left with the whole new understanding of their own personal arts, mm. which is the ultimate goal of any instructor or any seminar like that. Did I answer the question? I yeah, no, that was great. And I, I thought you were just happy I showed up because then I got to attack him all day instead of you. That was wicked cool too. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, I think seeing other arts and how they do things, for sure, I think a huge benefit is being able to then recognize how it relates to your art. And I think in a lot of ways can help you understand your own art better. Um, you know, I've come down here to teach at your school a couple of times. I've been to your school before. And every time I've taught at, at these other locations, I'm teaching my karate. But inevitably, multiple times I'm hearing, oh, you know what? you're doing this, it's so similar to this. Mm -hmm. And they are different, but they're not. Like you said earlier, I wasn't doing mm -hmm. it the way you taught, necessarily taught it, but it wasn't wrong, it was just a slightly different mm -hmm. variation. And I know Jeremy has talked about, he grew up doing karate, and when he did Taekwondo, he often was told, you're doing Taekwondo like a karate person. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, of course, because he trained and grew up being a mostly a karate person. So uh, I get that, that makes sense. Uh, what other, I'm thinking of one, but I'm going to throw it to you guys first, are there other benefits you can think of to cross-training? Uh, I think one of the things that stands out, again, for me, is this excitement that, you know, uh, those connections, right? Like, you and I became better friends when we could communicate and talk together. We, we had that kind of sorted out and figured out. Mm -hmm. Same thing, Mark and I became friends because he knew how to... He knew how to teach in the language I needed to learn, mm. but then when I explained, I wanted to, I wanted to take my art and I wanted to progress it and I wanted to add to it and I wanted to develop stuff. He then said, "Okay, well then this is the goal. Let's do it." Yeah. And um, I think that it's important because you can start to recognize things or have a similarity and a connection with somebody at an event like a free training day, where you go, "Oh, well." you do it that way, I do it this way, that's really close, that's really cool, why do you do it that way? And then you start to share passion. Yeah. Right? Because I think everybody's passionate about their own particular brand of art, right? Whatever it is. But that passion can be shared. It doesn't mean that uh, you're going to have the same passion that I do sure. uh, about it, right? And so I think that that could be really, um, that's the most beneficial part to me, outside of the physical benefit of mm. now you 
get to do more things. Yeah. And that was the thing I was thinking when I said, oh, I have one, but I'll throw it to you guys. Mm -hmm. It was the making connections with other martial artists. Even though you're not a Shorinru karate practitioner, even though you're not a karate practitioner, like there are still connections that we've made. And and I'm not even talking friendship. I mean, obviously there is friendship connection, but even if it's just networking with other people, um, you hold a tournament, uh, this is a hypothetical, if you hold a tournament at your school, mm-hmm. you now have other, other people that you can mm-hmm. invite because you have networked beyond right. and you know other yeah. schools. Right. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be adversarial, right? So right. making those connections is good. Any thoughts or comments there, Mark? I agree wholeheartedly. I keep bringing up, up the term tribe mm-hmm. because your tribe expands. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I have my school, you all have your school. But when we start to interconnect, things start to grow, start to build positive, in a very positive way, mm. which is what martial arts should and will be all about. In fact, if you, uh, I studied some of the, some of the old karate books, mm-hmm. and you say, oh well, all these styles are basically the same, coming from the same place, they kind of split apart and did their own thing. But it all comes back when they get together, they, they, work, they work together. Mm. So it's very, very awesome, yeah. very awesome. Yeah. So I think we've done a pretty good job of talking about a lot of the benefits of cross-training, but I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about there are some downsides to cross-training, and I think you know we need to bring them up because it's not – I don't want to say cross-training isn't for everyone. I think everyone can benefit from learning from other people, but I think there are some things to talk about. Um, can you, th- Mark, can you think of any downsides or any, any particular ones you want to bring up? Well, from my own personal experience, I pick and choose who I cross-train with and I think it's very important. Mm-hmm. And the way I cross-train with them is very important too. There's a, there's a Kali organization, Dog Brothers, which I really like what they do. But when I go to cross-train with them, I go with the paddle weapons. I grab the paddle weapons because I want to get up and teach the next day. Well, they, these guys like to use the hard weapons and they go really hard and they demonstrate what will happen if you get hit with a stick? So for me, when I do that, I cross train in a very particular way. Mm. And all the people I cross train with, i very particular about because I don't want to get injured and I will not let myself get injured, which puts us in a very interesting position. If I work with people I know and trust, nobody gets injured and everybody walks away smiling. Mm. And that's the best, best thing there is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think that there's two there's two things that that could hinder or not be good. If you're unwilling to have an open mind, if you're gonna cross train and you and you think you want to learn and then you catch yourself often saying, "Oh well, I do it this way. Mm. Oh well, I learned it this way. Oh well, right." And that that kind yeah, of yeah. oh well it kind of leads into the the whole idea of cross training is to experience that that culture that's that system. And so when you're spending your whole time talking about what you've done, you're not actually gaining any aspects from it. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, you're, you're hurting the relationship, right? Because mm-hmm. that, that, then it doesn't seem like you're there to learn, even though you might genuinely want to. Yeah. Um, so there's a time and a place to, to make a comparison, I think. So having an open mind and just, you know, being the white belt, as it were, right? The, you know, when I started cross-training with Mark, I was a second-degree black belt in Kempo. And I came in and put a white sash on. Like, I was a white belt all over again. And and I asked for that. You didn't mm-hmm. make me do it. I asked for it because I wanted the um, I, I wanted the opportunity to just be a white belt again. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the second thing that you really have to do, or, you know, or you have to be cautious of when you're cross-training, is you have to make sure that you have a set goal. Why am I, why am I learning this? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if it's just... I want another black belt or I want to get this rank or I want to get that rank. Well, okay. That's, that's, that's an okay goal, but what's going to happen to the stuff you stop practicing when you're practicing the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, so at some point something, because the more systems you add, the more material there is for you to practice and go through and remember and recall. And if, so if all you're doing is seeking a rank or, or a recognition, you have to be careful if cross training is really the thing that that'll benefit you. Yeah, I think that open-minded piece is, is huge, and 
I would say there's nothing wrong with mentioning whether it's in your head or, or verbally. We talked about earlier about how, oh, like, you know, it's really cool you, you do it this way. Our system does it this way. But as long as you are looking at it as making those connections, not in a, our system does it this way and yeah. your way is yep. wrong. Or, I don't, why do you do it that way? That's a very different mentality from, Oh, you know what? That's really cool. Why do you do it that way? Yep. Like, uh, I, I want to understand. I think that's very different. Um, and so I think that's an important distinction to make. Yep. Um, another downside that I have been thinking of, I, I, have a, I have a couple, but one of them is potentially financial, right? If I'm training at my school, I'm paying my instructor X number of dollars a month. And if I want to go learn from this other instructor and this other instructor and this other instructor, there's a financial component there. And, and I think, you know, that can be a deterrent for some people. And I think that's an important thing to recognize. I also know that at a certain level, yes, I'm paying my instructor this amount of money. And then I go over to this gentleman. Well, we might be able to train each other. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's some re reciprocity there. Ooh. Can't believe I said that word. Wow. Right. That was that good. was. I'm impressed. Yeah, I am too. Yeah. Very nice. But you know, we can you can negate some of that to some degree if you're of a certain of a certain level, mm -hmm. which brings up my next downside. Personally, I am not a fan of my white belt students cross training in other arts, and it has nothing to do with being worried about losing them as a student. It has everything to do with, I want them to get a firm grasp of one thing before they start to tweak it. Like, I want them to learn the way I'm teaching it first, and then once they get to a certain level, then I feel a lot more comfortable with them going off. And in fact, I inc would encourage my, in karate would be brown belt, you know, more in advance, just before black belt, I encourage those students to do some cross training. So. One downside for sure for me personally is being a beginner in something. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I totally agree with that. If some of your lower ranks decide they want to go cross training other styles, they might get confused. Mm. They, totally, totally. I mean, you came down, you were doing some, some cardio with me today, and I, I watched you, and I know you're very accomplished. I watched you to make sure that you had what I wanted to show you down before we move to the next part. So if you have someone with limited experience go to a situation where they want to, might want to show them everything, it, it can be mind-boggling and mind-confusing and, and not good for any anyone. Mm. So getting a solid foundation in wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, is very good before you go look around. And I suggest that everyone talk to your instructor before you go out and do that. Because they might say, hold off a bit. That was going to be another yep. downside coming yep. up. Yep. But before we get there, Craig, any thoughts on... Yeah, I usually ask my students to have about a year with me before I let them cross-train. So they're not super far along mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But a year is a good amount of time to get at least some of the understanding down. And, you know, to, to, to pivot into the point Mark just made that we were going to talk about anyway. Um, you know, talking to your instructor, if a student comes to me and says that they want to cross-train in something... Uh, the first question is, okay, what what is it? What are you looking for to get? Um, and because of relationships through whistle kick and other things, I, I pretty much can point them in a direction from, for to someone I know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I know will teach with similar vocabulary or or in a way where where it's not contradictive of what they've already been working. That's why I'm okay with a year because. I'll help steer them. If there's an instructor I don't know that they really want to go with, I'm never going to stop them. Yeah. But I'm also going to do my best to help empower them to find the information that they seek. And so I have students that come down and train with Mark when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, they just come down, they train with him. I'd have no problem if we were closer to have students going to see you mm -hmm. without me being present in the room i don't feel like i have to be there over you know looming over them yeah, yeah. right and sometimes they learn better when they they're, they're not there their mm -hmm. regular instructors not in the room mm -hmm. um so um yeah i think i think a year of training would be good for me and then talking to your instructor it, it could depending on the instructor go, go one way or the other yeah 
Yeah, I definitely wanted to bring up, we talked earlier about having an open mind, and that's important for you as a, uh, a student. If you want to start training, like, you know, I'm, I'm training karate, and if I wanted to start training eskrima or mm-hmm. silat or anything else, like, I have to have an open mind. But if I am the student of someone else, and they do not have an open mind, that can be an issue. Um, and I think you mentioning, and you, Mark, you mentioned as well, like having a talk with your instructor mm-hmm. is very important. Um, and we're not going to sit here and say this is what you need to tell your instructor because every student and instructor is different, but just recognize that that may have to be handled with a little bit of tact. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on your rank and your you know, relationship with your instructor that may be easier or harder, but I think that is an important distinction to make that uh, I'm not a fan of doing things behind your instructor's back, so letting them know I think is important, for sure. I Yeah, I agree. You have to have that as, as you would inspect your instructor to have an open relationship where they're talking to you, mm-hmm. you should I, I feel give that back. Um, and if for the instructors listening, if a student comes to you and asks you, is, is it okay if I go to the seminar or I go do this thing? Um, you know, an initial thought could certainly be, well, why? Why aren't you happy here? And it may have nothing to do with that. It just may not be something in your skill set. Yeah, yep. You know, and, and being humble enough in that way where you recognize, hey, you know what? I, you know, maybe I'm not so great at Aikido because I've never done it. Mm-hmm. So, if somebody wants to learn a little Aikido at this seminar, come on. Okay, absolutely, go for it. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, and recognizing that martial artists really aren't in competition with each other. Yeah. Right, and that's how I don't. I don't know how many times we've ever yep. said that on the show. And a few times. A, a, a thousand voices on the show <laughs> have said that. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not in competition with each other. We're here to bring all of the arts up, mm-hmm. and so. You know, giving your students that opportunity or going to an event, you know, mm-hmm. the, the free training days or, you know, in New Hampshire, we have the martial arts symposium. Like those things can yeah. be great yeah, for, for students and they come back excited. Exactly. And I would say, again, this is to the instructors out there. Let's be pragmatic about this. I, let's say I'm an instructor, Craig is my student. He comes to me and says, there's this seminar happening in a couple months. Uh, whether it's an all-day seminar taught by one person or it's a seminar like Marshall Summit or the symposium where there's lots of different you're taking like 45 minutes to an hour-long class with someone and then you're taking another hour-long class with someone here's the reality instructors your student is not gonna learn much in an hour that they're gonna remember their their martial art is not gonna be hurt by having a 60-minute class with someone it, it just isn't but is your student going to go to that class and enjoy themselves? Probably. They're definitely going to network and meet new people, but it's not going to hurt their art. Yeah. And what do you lose by letting them go? You lose nothing, really. What do you, uh, what do you gain by letting them go? Everything. Because they very well, like, like you said, come back enthused and jazzed about the, quote, new thing they learned that they're going to forget in two and a half weeks. I, I know mm-hmm. at my school, part of our culture that we have is if you go to a free training day or a symposium or an all-day seminar, whatever, you go yeah. out and you train mm-hmm. elsewhere. The first class you come back, I give that I give every student who went 10 minutes of the floor mm-hmm. and I let them share their favorite thing they learned. Awesome. And it get, they are so excited to bring it back to yep. everyone. Yep. Mm-hmm. And honestly, as an instructor who runs a school and has to manage a business, and it, it, my students are excited to come to class. You know what that yeah. means? That means that they're coming in to class. class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mark, any thoughts? Oh, you guys have put it so well with what you all what you, that you just said. It's very important. There's been, I've had teachers way back when who, nope, you're going to stay here. You're not going to go, you're not even going to do a tournament. So you, we want to encourage our students at a certain rate to go out and participate in these events. Uh, I highly recommend uh, our Master Summer coming up in Keene because that gives you everything. And for the instructors out there, go with your students. If you have the opportunity, take these opportunities. I remember when I was very young, uh, actually in Beverly, we had like Wally J, Remy Presses, 
I didn't go because somebody told me, no, no, you don't have to go. That was silly. Mm -hmm. So these take the opportunity now because believe it or not, even I won't be here forever. I'm going to try, but I won't be here forever. <laughs> so get out, go to the events, enjoy, enjoy everything, enjoy the martial arts. Yeah. Well said. There's also just, I think for me, my final point in this is if you, to bounce off what Mark said, go with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing more inspiring to me than when I see my instructors on the floor learning beside me. Yep, yep. Like that, that gets me excited. And I know because my students have, when I have, when I have guests come up for seminars at the school, I'm taking the seminar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'll snap a couple photos. I'll, you know, but for the most part, I'm in the class. You're in the mix. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm right in the middle of the room and I won't wear my black belt if I'm not a black belt in it. And I'll, you know, or I'll wear my, my whistle kick belt where I flip it. Yeah, right? so it's white. Yeah. yeah. So I'll do that, no problem, because it, my students, I mean, you saw it. They all were like... They wanted to learn too. It yeah. also frees me up from the burden of having to make them think that I knew it already, mm -hmm. and then I have yep. to answer their questions yep. after you leave. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I dig it. I think uh, we've covered the subject pretty well. Is there anything we're missing? The ins and outs of cross training. Any ins or any outs that we didn't bring up that you want to? When the time is right, do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. When the time is right, do it. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. For you guys listening at home, were there ins or outs that we missed? Is there a, a, another plus side to cross training? Is there another downside to cross training? Is there something that we didn't bring up? Let us know. You can comment on our Facebook group. Uh, you can uh, comment on the YouTube page uh, on the uh, video for this episode. Or you can email me, Andrew at whistlekick.com. I also happen to know you can email Craig at whistlekick.com too. That's right. Uh, uh, and you could send Mark a letter in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. You could. You could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just because you threw your hands up. <laughs> I know. Just because. Um, just because. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We certainly appreciate uh, all the support that you would could give us, uh, whether that support is financially through Patreon or whether just telling someone an episode that you liked, let someone else know that you enjoyed it and have them listen as well. Um, or whistlekick.com you can purchase so many things go there there's so much new stuff added all the time um, and so I could all but guarantee if you haven't been there in the last week or two there's something new on the website for sale uh, so you should go check that out and if you use the code podcast15 you'll save yourself 15% which is pretty cool alright anything else or you can probably catch any combination of us at a free training day. That's true. Right. You can Anywhere. go to a free training day. So, Anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. Pretty you much. can pretty much catch at least one of us at, at any of them. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. All right. So until next time. Smile. Train hard. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Get to the backwards. I did it backwards. Train hard. Oh. <laughs> That's staying in. Well, I got one off.